Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. We're gonna do something a bit different today, no vlog. Um, instead I wanna sit down and I want you to have a chance to get to know me better. Um, I think I've written about things in various places and if you've ever been to a Girl Games event you may have heard this story but today I'm gonna talk about my journey to balance, um, how I kind of have been at all aspects of fitness. I've been overweight, I've been underweight, and how I am here today, healthy, happy, and I think in a pretty good place. So, okay, let's crack on. So the story starts um, when I was growing up, really. Um, I was always a little bit overweight, a little bit of a chubby child. Um, I was forever having a little muffin top and things like that. Um, had no inclination or interest in exercise whatsoever. Um, at school, <laughs> I would do anything I could to get out of PE. I forever had a period, like never never did swimming. Um, it just wasn't something I was interested in. All my friends were sporty, but I just couldn't get into it. I just didn't care. I much prefer to go and, you know, eat some cake or, you know, have seconds of dessert nothing's changed. <laughs> so that was kind of me growing up and I'd say like until the age of about 17, 18, I just really didn't care. Um, I didn't have a bad self body image um, and to be honest I never really have but I knew I was bigger, I knew I was overweight. About then I was a size 14, I'm going to put some pictures up for you to see, um, and I was about size 14, I'd say I was around about my heaviest, about 18 years old, at about 11 and a half stone, I'm not sure what that is in kilos or pounds. Um, I got into drama school and when I got there I soon realised we were dancing every day, we were moving every day and I was so unfit, um, I remember like literally felt like I'd been hit by a truck after our first week of training. and. At that time, the skill set I had, which was more based around singing and acting, was the parts were more for like size 10, size 8 kind of girls, and I was a size 14. So I kind of thought, okay, I want to be at the top of my game, I want to be the best me I can be. I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to do this, um, I'm going to like work really hard um, in all my dance classes. Um, I started doing things like extra bits of running and thinking about more about what I was eating. I went to a drama school for two years as like a preparation um, for my three year course in musical theatre and at that time I was 21 when I got there. I was 21, partied hard, it was really fun. I was never the most talented, I won't lie, that's why I don't do musical theatre now. I wasn't the most talented but I felt like I could be the fittest, I could be the strongest, I could hold, I could do all the jumps, I could hold the plank the longest. Um, and so that was my survival technique, really. That was like my way to survive drama school. Um, I also kind of got a fixation on wanting a six pack at that point. I'd seen Legally Blonde the musical, there's a particular character called Brooke Wyndham, and she had this six pack that I just was like, I need that in my life. Fast forward to being, 22 in my second year and I was went through a, a period of getting tons and tons of bloating. I was constantly bloating, constantly kind of gassy and gross. Of course after being particularly ill one point I went to the doctors and he kind of said is it something you're eating, look at your diet and at that point everything indicated to gluten being something that was really affecting my stomach. But by like the Easter of that year, I'd read a few blogs, seen a few of my you know healthy uh, people out there who are a bit quite huge now saying you know gluten free, sugar free, clean eating. And I thought I've got to do it. I've, this this is what I've got to do. My boyfriend at the time, um, not Jack, had gone away for five months um, to like the other side of the world basically, and so I just kind of filled my time with um, drama school. It's a really, really, really intense uh, process. You're there eight till five minimum every day, and then you do all the extra stuff on top. Um, I was going to the gym after drama school, and I was working two jobs, which required me to be on my feet the whole time. So around that time, I also got Instagram. And my original Instagram was clean fit lifestyle because I really wanted to like hone in on the clean eating. I loved fitness and um, I thought, you know, this was a lifestyle. 
and it still is for me. I started following all these Fitspo people on Instagram, people I still follow today, and at that time it, there was a, a trend for macros and if it fits your macros and all of that, all these American people I was following. So I of course got my fitness pal, I worked out my macros by going online and finding some calculators and I religiously stuck to macros for probably about three months, maybe even longer. Um, and that summer I just dropped a ton of weight. I like had to increase my macros because I was just losing so much weight that I kind of didn't know what to do. Um, I was still eating a really good amount, I never starved myself. I never even went below about 1700 calories. That was like my minimum, that was like a really like low day. And then at my, at my peak, I was eating 2300 calories just to maintain my weight and even then I would drop weight because I was so active. Um, and so I got back to college and the reaction was actually like, Tally, what have you done? Like, you're so tiny, where have you gone? Um, I remember being in one dance class and doing sit-ups and I, they were really hurting my lower back because I was so thin and like my body fat was so low that um, it was bruising my back every time I was doing a sit-up. And I remember one of the teachers just going, Tally, you just need to get some meat on your bones. And I kind of thought, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I've been working really hard to look like this. You know, I've got a ripped six pack. I've been working, this is what I wanted. I've been working so hard from this, like, that's so rude. And then gradually I remember being pulled out of class one day and being asked if I had an eating disorder and because I was so small um, you know and they'd seen me just shrink you know do you have an eating disorder you know are you okay I was like oh my goodness I'm absolutely fine I got very defensive very upset because I couldn't believe it I was I was still eating way more than any one of my friends and I still do eat more than my friends um, and yeah, I just kind of was like, I can't help it if this is what my body's doing. <clears throat> it got to a point where there, was a set, there were quite a few occasions when people would question if I was unwell. And I was really, really frustrated by that. I was also, at that point, really obsessive with the macros. I was constantly thinking about, you know, what do I have left? What am I going to have for tea? Oh, I can't have that because I want to have that later. I was constantly doing little calculations in my head as to what my next meal is going to be. And, you know, I've kind of freaked out if the meals were not prepared by myself. At that point, I'd say I was pretty much only eating my own food. My social life was really suffering. And my housemates at the time were amazing and kind of sat me down and said, like, are you okay? You know, you don't need to track all your food. You don't need to do this. Like, you know what you're doing. And at that point, I just kind of took a step back from it all, deleted my fitness pal. That was the best thing I ever did. And was like, no, it's okay, I've been eating a certain way for so long, for like the last four or five months. This is in the October, the last four or five months, and um, I know how to eat now. So I started eating intuitively, but still eating only clean foods. And by clean foods, I'm talking things that, with ingredients I could pronounce, that I felt had five or less ingredients, and things like that. I started to maybe go out for a few more drinks every now and then, and I might go out and, you know, for a meal, and. That, but I would still be fairly anxious about that situation. Well, I was still gymming really hard, I was still eating very, very well and eat all my own foods. Um, you know, I was bringing my cookie dough to, I remember I used to make chickpea cookie dough, I still do it. And um, I took it to like, when I was doing my third year shows, that's what I was eating the change of names or casein and they all thought I was mad. And they still think I'm mad, but I think they understand me a little bit more now. Um, that year I also met Zana and Vicky, um, so who are the other three Girl Games members. And if you don't follow them, I'm going to put their links below because they are awesome girls. Um, and and now my best friends. So I met them and I kind of met girls who kind of got my whole fitness thing, but equally were like there to kind of say, you know, you, you know, yeah, we, as people who are into the same things as me, they did kind of like every now and then go out for meals or have a treat and everything and I was like wow really and then fast forward a few months and I think the biggest change for me to find balance um, and to you know to be kind of where I am today was meeting Jack um, Jack has played a pivotal role in my life um, oh, I don't know why I'm getting upset about it so it's really funny, there's a little story that I kind of tell about meeting Jack and kind of like, it really demonstrates how far I've come to balance. On our second or third date, I think, I went over to his house and I cooked him uh, katsu curry and um, 
Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Oh, so silly. And then he was like, don't worry, I'll take care of dessert. And I'm like, okay, Ooh, like what's he gonna make? I don't know. Um, and he just got this tub of ice cream out of the freezer and, and was kind of like, dessert, let's grab spoons and let's just eat it out of the tub. And I was just really hesitant, so I probably had like two spoonfuls and I was like, that's enough, I think we're okay, I don't want to eat anymore, you know. Um, and then let's fast forward probably like a year and we're buying peanut butter cup Ben and Jerry's, which is our favourite. And Jack is grabbing the tub from me, being like, I think that's enough, we need to put it away, you've eaten three quarters of a tub of Ben and Jerry's. So now I just have my treats and it's cool and it's no big deal. I want to talk a little bit about the balance in my life now and how I've kind of come to this place. I now work out, I'd say, four times with weights a week, kind of minimum, um, but pretty much four times. That'll be two leg days and a push and a pull day. And then I have my two spin classes on top. And um, because I'm going to Sierra Leone and running, I'm trying to do a bit more cardio. So at the moment that includes like a Barry's boot camp where they run on treadmills and stuff because I really don't want to make myself run. Um, so, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing at the moment. I have been tracking my food, which, you know, probably until like this year, I don't, I couldn't have done it. I haven't even used my fitness pal for, you know, about two years, but I kind of felt that I was in a really good place and I wanted to kind of work out after eating intuitively for so long and probably getting to the point where I was eating a bit too much every day, um, you know, couldn't go a day without eating, you know, a lot of peanut butter and dark chocolate. I kind of thought, I need to put some boundaries on myself again, just just so I'm learning and, um, you know, being mindful and aware of what I'm eating. So, when it comes to food now, I kind of loosely track. I use this fitness tracker, which I find so useful, because on the days I'm, it says I've done, you know, I've really use a lot of energy, I'm eating more. And on the days when I haven't done so much, I'm eating a little bit less. And at the moment that really works for me. Um, it's given me so much flexibility in my life. One night a week, Jack and I have a date night and that night is kind of like whatever I wanna do, you know. I don't stress about that anymore. I don't think, oh my goodness, I've gotta go and burn that off. I've got to go and do my treadmill sprints. I don't think that at all. I just think, okay, you know, overall in the week, I've, I'm using a lot of energy, um, so I need to fuel my body, I need to be, have energy, and so that is my number one priority. My number one priority is not my abs, is not a six pack, is not how I look. My priority now is to feel good, um, to improve what I can do. I want to get super heavy squats, I want to get my deadlift really up, I want to be able to do pull ups, I want to be able to you know, sprint faster than I did last week. I'm much more about my performance now and I don't base my fitness and my health around you know, my body fat, which I think a lot of people are at the moment. I see a massive trend online of, you know, we're all looking up to fitness models, we're looking up to bikini athletes and those girls, or those guys, that they're athletes, they're not, you know, they diet hard and it's a, it's such a sacrifice and I think we really underestimate what those people put themselves through. Um, that is a necessary, that's not a maintainable lifestyle for the average person, you know, and most of us were average people, I'm an average person and we need to find a balance, like we cannot eat fish and asparagus for the rest of our lives, we need to know that we can go out for dinner, eat an Ando's, have some Froyo and life is good. So I'm going to end on that note and that little rant. Um, I hope this has kind of maybe helped you understand me a little bit more. Maybe you've identified with some of the things I've spoken about today and maybe this is the little kick up the bum you needed to help you find your balance. Um, I'm really, really passionate about people living healthy lifestyles and that's the one thing I want to get across online is um, this is a lifestyle, this is a life choice. We want to be healthy, happy. We want to be able to play with our grandkids when we're 90 years old. We want to get to 90 years old, you know? So, yeah, that's to me, is what health and fitness is all about. So I really hope you agree with me. Um, 
guys thank you so much for watching please give this video a like and a little thumbs up and um, please subscribe for more videos I'm going to be doing a little few more like these sit down stuff and some vlogs and workouts and all the bits in between food you know you name it I'm going to give it a go um, so yeah please like subscribe and I'll see you next time bye